good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My paper is on um, transportation and climate change in Nigeria. And um, I've co-authored it with a colleague at the uh, Ministry of Physical Planning in Lagos. Um, our focus really is on CO2, and the study context is Lagos, Nigeria. Now, we want to start with um, global figures before we go down to what we're, what's happening in Nigeria. Globally, we have transport responsible for as much as 23% of energy-related CO2 emissions. There are different figures for this, but this is from African Development Bank, and then set to account for as much as 30% of greenhouse gases. CO2 emissions are predicted to increase by as much as 120% by 2050, and the IPCC cautions that we would need to reduce by 50% in developing countries CO2 emissions if we are going to, 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 to have sustainable levels. Though there are, there are thoughts that CO2 emissions are, are, are low in developing countries, and like somebody said at the plenary, why, why do you even bother to measure them? But the issues are that the, 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 the lifestyles and the economic activities are centered around patterns that, are, that, that, that promote modes that are polluting in the, in the, in the transport sector. So even, even if we don't have clear-cut um, issues now, we want to avoid them altogether in the long term by taking caution now. Now, the road transport subsector is a major contributor to total transport emissions. We have an example in London, 80% of CO2 emissions. Uh, incidentally, this transport mode forms the, uh, the, major, the major mode, of, it's the major mode for movements, in, for internal movements in Nigeria. Now, um, this, this graph is on fossil fuel consumption, CO2 emissions from fossil fuel consumption in Nigeria over a century, from 1910 to 2010. And we have, we, we know that transport is a major user, user of, this, um, of fossil fuels. We've had significant increases of over 54% in the last century. And in the last two and a half decades, we've had a steep upward climb in total, CO, in total CO2 emissions from fossil fuels from about 1997. There have been large contributions from liquid fuels from about 1970. Now, this is for, this is on CO2 emissions from different economic activities in Nigeria. We don't have this data for several years, but we have two years we can look at here, 1999 and 2003, and we see transport standing out clearly as the major contributor in CO2 emissions, 38% in 1999, 41.6% in, in 2003. Now we want to conceptualize the issues before we go on, and the, this study, the, con the, the conceptual background to this study is on urban form, transport demand, and climate change. Uh, how does one lead to the other? You know. Now we have several urban spatial structures. We talked about that at the last session. There are monocentric structures, we have polycentric structures. The monocentric ones are the ones we have one single CBD, a central business district, and then the polycentric one, we have several central business districts. There's really no one that is outstanding. But for the composite one, there's a major central business district, and then you have other major commercial business districts that have developed around, uh, around the CBD or in different parts of the city. And this composite structure seems to fit the Lagos pattern more than the other two. Now, the, the urban spatial structure will determine the land use patterns. These land use patterns will naturally they would dictate the, the, the transport network form and, and, and the transport network would determine which modes are preponderant you know, uh, in the city. These modes could be individual, they could be transit. Now the transport modes will also affect the daily trip patterns, the vehicle, the total vehicle kilometers traveled and the passenger kilometers traveled and these are the things that will now influence global <coughs> Uh, the GHG emissions. So this is the link between urban morphology, transport demand, and climate change. Now this is the study context, Lagos, Nigeria. It's a fairly small, small territory, but uh, a very complex urban area. The most complex we have in Nigeria, about 17.5 million. It's been designated a, a mega city by the United Nations, actually. And that mega city region is, is just a part, 
it's just a part of the entire city. It's about 37% of the landmass. But that part houses about 90% of the population. We have very high population densities, as much as 5,032 in the state as a whole. And in the mega city region, we are looking at about 20,000 people per square kilometers. We've had untamed economic growth in Lagos. And the CBD, the Central Business District, is the, is the Lagos Island, actually. But we also have commercial business districts in several parts of Ikeja, Agege, Ikorodu, there. Now, we, we looked at the vehicle inventory in Lagos. This, this gives us the vehicle inventory. All vehicle types are represented here. We have private vehicles, public transport, everything is represented here. And we've had a total increase by as much as 234% over a decade. This has been composed mostly of private cars. And we know that private cars are regarded as the most polluting modes uh, in the transport sector. Mot motorcycles have also increased tremendously, but um, public transport happens to be in short supply. Now, this is what we call the vehicle profile and the modal split paradox. You can see the different types of um, vehicles accounting for so much percentage of the vehicle fleet. Look at the private car, as much as 78% of the vehicle fleet, but only 7.8% of, of trips. The buses, about 10%, accounting for 70% of the trips. The BRT, the, that's the bus rapid transit, it, it, it came on about 2007 in Lagos, but it accounts for only about 2.3 percent of, of the trips. Now, the territory, the territory itself, the territory of Lagos, is about 22 percent of water, you know, but only about 1.03 percent of commuters use the um, inland waterways. That, that mode is really, uh, it, it's not developed as such. Now, what are the implications of this for development? Like we've been told, climate change is not really, it's not all about the environment, it's about development. We have public transport in short supply. We have private cars uh, proliferating largely in, in, in the urban space. And what it means is that it's the most polluting modes that are the most popular modes in Lagos. Now, these are the, um, the climate parameters for uh, a 30-year period. 1976 to about 2005 and we have divided into two halves 15 years this way 15 years the other way and the summary we have here is that we have high average rainfall and temperature records for this last half of the 30 year period and we have, we've also seen that there are wider variabilities in in in, in this um in these parameters yeah in 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 the last half of the of the period we're looking at now what are the implications of this for development again in Lagos? Increasing volumes of rainfall, of course, coupled with the flat topography of the city, predisposes to, to frequent flooding. We've had flooding episodes, several of them in Lagos in the last few years. And, and we, there was a survey in 2010, we, we, we were told 38% of household street access were actually affected by floods. And these, these are pictures from Lagos. These are some of the implications of um, increased rainfall, hydrologic change, seen in flooding episodes. It, it, we, we have the erosion of beaches. This is Kuramo Beach. This happened just about two months back. Uh, it, was, it, was, um, it was inundated and we had that, we had that, um, we had that episode in August. That's the erosion of beaches. Now, there's also the inundation of highways and the erosion of road bases. Uh, the erosion of bridge supports, and we, we find that a lot of infrastructure, transport infrastructure is affected when we have these floods. And so there's a kind of a reverse effect. Transport is contributing to climate change, and then the extreme weather events that we have from this climate change is also affecting the, 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 the transport infrastructure. So we have that, we have that um, problem. And now for, for temperatures, we said warmer temperatures, of course, were hard to drive stress through physiological discomforts and fatigue. And we expect that human errors are more likely to occur. The, 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 the consequences from increased rainfall seem to be more direct 
than the consequences for improved uh, for increased temperature that is for the transport sector so we want to link the two scenarios in lagos the transport modes and the climate change situation and I, let me just say here that we cannot direct entirely ascribe the changes in climate to 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 the transport sector but we do know that there are linkages from 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 the data on um, transport contribution as an economic activity and there are also reverse effects we have said it the floods depreciate transport infrastructure and then you have less road space for cars more congestion more pollution now this is um co2 emissions from major transport modes in lagos now we, we, we can see here the number of the commuters on this on this on this uh, on the third column and then we have the the modal percentage of commuters and then on that side we have the modal percentage of emissions and we can see again the private car accounting for about 7.08 percent of, of commuters but as much as um, 30 31 percent of emissions now in terms of uh, total tons the minibus appears to have the most but in terms of um, co2 per passenger kilometer traveled those modes are actually more efficient than the private cars. You can see the BRT seems to be the best of them. That's the bus rapid transit. And we said this table actually contains the best case scenario. Because what we did was that we used data for commuters for Lagos, but the vehicle um, emission capacity we, 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 we was based on, on, on the model by Betode Hall, and what he used was for New York City. And we know that the cars in Nigeria are, are fairly old. They're mostly used cars and emissions are likely to be even higher. So we calculated the total kilo, uh, kilogram per year per commuter from the major modes was about 517.03 of CO2 equivalents. And what's the message here? Lagos commuters appear to be contributing a lot to the pool of CO2 emissions and we can do better than that. Now, these are the suggestions for policy. We want to reduce uh, well, to reduce daily distance traveled through changes in land use, we said, may not be as popular. Most times it's, it's, it's not effective. So we are looking at alternatives to promote public transport. And if to, to do this, we, we need to make that mode competitive and attractive. We need to provide incentives. It has to be cheaper. And, it, and apart from being cheaper, it has to be convenient because a lot of people will not take it in Lagos. If it's not, if it, if it doesn't offer the convenience, and it has to be prioritized. When we have bus priority lanes, then we know that we can reduce trip time for commuters. That would be for the short term. Now, the, 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 in the medium and long term, we said the light rail transit will have to be developed because um, there's, there's limited road space to work with. Now, modal shift towards public transport will happen in Lagos only if price and transit time, as well as convenience, are more competitive with other modes. Thank you so much for listening.